Well, hello there, challengees, and welcome to the Always Better Challenge Show, the show that's designed to help you take steps today that lead to a better and happier tomorrow. I'm your humble host, Joe Bedford, and as always, well, first, uh, I'm going to start by reminding you to please subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Please think of maybe one person, one specific person that would be interested in this show. Share it with them. Tell them about it. Um, please feel free to sign up for our email updates at the website, abetterchallenge.com. Please like the video down below if you do indeed like it. And please, I'd love to hear your comments on the video below as well. One other thing before we get started that I want to mention. This is a brand new thing. And this is for those of you who might want to support the show. Um, I haven't talked about this much. I talked about this in one other episode, um, the episode where I reviewed the product that I'm affiliated with. Um, so th this is another thing along those lines. You know, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, complain about the fact that uh, th there are some expenses uh, with making the show. They're not a lot, as I said before, but there are some expenses that I'm paying out of my own pocket to produce the show. And also, I would like to grow the show in the future, and that, of course, is going to take money as well. So if you are interested in supporting the show, you can do that at patreon.com. This is a website that some of you may already be familiar with if you've listened to other podcasts or YouTube shows. Uh, a lot of those folks uh, do have a page set up on Patreon, and I've set one up as well. Um, you can find that page at patreon.com slash ABC show. And Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Of course, there'll be a link down below to that. And this is where you can pledge a certain amount of money per month uh, towards the show. And there are some perks along with different levels of contribution. And those are all detailed there um, on the website. Uh, you can get a shout out, you can get a hangout, and you can get a coaching call. That's the quick version of that. More details on the website at patreon.com forward slash ABC show. So with all that out of the way, I would now like to uh, offer our daily quote, as always. And our quote of the day is by Will Cuppy. Will said, Etiquette is behaving yourself a little better than is absolutely essential. So yes, today's show is going to be uh, Welcome to Joe's Charm School. Now, some folks may say, oh, well, boy, uh, Joe's turned 50, and sure enough, the show's g gone all old-fashioned and outdated, and what a obsolete concept etiquette. I hope you're not saying that, but some of you might be. Um, let me just say that, in my opinion, etiquette is more relevant than ever. It is not an old-fashioned collection of pointless rules and customs. There's a lot more to it than that. Instead, what I would encourage you to do is just think of it as being as considerate of other people as you can be. Having good manners, again, in my opinion, is a way of aspiring to be the better people that deep down inside I think we all want to be. Now, I guess the argument against that is, you know, well, you know, but I just, I'm just casual. I just want to be casual, um, you know, and I don't want to put on airs and I want to be relaxed and all that good stuff. And I'm not, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but the, the point I want to make is that what, what does casual actually mean? Um, the point I'm trying to get to is being casual, I mean, it's appropriate sometimes, sure, but it's another way of saying that something is unimportant. And so if you think about the most important events in your life or really important people in your life, you know, folks that you wanted to make a real good impression on, um, you're certainly going to be not casual then. You're going to be more formal because those things are important, and that's a way of showing the importance of those things. So why not treat everybody as important? Because they are. So that would be my little sales pitch for um, having good manners and not being so casual all the time. And another point that I want to make before we move on is that, well, a couple points, I guess. One point I want to make is that having good manners or good etiquette, this applies all the time. 
This applies in whatever situation you find yourself in. The point that I want to make here is that you want to have good manners when you are being served at a restaurant. Um, show good manners to the server. Show good manners to the people that are assisting you and serving you and helping you throughout the day. This is not just something that you do. It's you, you treat you treat everybody with good manners and respect and like they're important is the is the point I'm trying to make. I guess another point that I need to make before we move on is that um, there's an obvious minefield that I guess you can run into with manners, especially if you are a man. Um, a lot of, when we talk about manners, a lot of people think about old fashioned manners and a lot of that is about how men are towards women. And so that can be tricky in our modern society where there is an obvious, uh, uh, you know, a, a correct emphasis on the fact that men and women are equal and that men are not superior to women. So, you know, I almost don't know what to say about this. I, you know, I, because I, I am a little bit old fashioned in some ways, I do defer to women in a lot of situations. And I just feel like that's the courteous thing to do. And I also, you know, men and women are equal, but men and women are different. Men, as a rule, are bigger and stronger than women. So I think it's, you know, completely appropriate to, you know, ask a woman if you can help her carry, a, you know, something that's heavy or help her down from the bus or, you know, something, something along those lines. And, you know, I say as a rule, there are some women at the gym who maybe should be offering to carry my packages for me. And that's great. But so just think, I guess the best advice I have for you is, you know, just be courteous. Well, first of all, be courteous to everyone, men and women. And... Um, I mean, the only other thing I guess I can say is I can share my own experience. I can tell you, you know, I hold doors open for women. I, I do hold doors open for men though as well. I have never in my 50 years of life had a woman be offended or at least express to me that she was offended by me doing something like holding a door for her. Um, now I do live in the South, so you, you can factor that in if you want to, your mileage may vary, but so you use your own judgment, and we're gonna we'll talk about that in some of the spe specifics as we go, as far as the uh, the gender rules or, or roles or whatever we want to call it. And you know, obviously, let's just remember what the point of manners is, which is to make is to treat people well, to make people feel comfortable. So you know, obviously, use your common sense as well. Don't do something that's going to make somebody feel uncomfortable or insulted or something along those lines. So that's, I guess, my, my thoughts on that. So um, I guess now we're just gonna talk about some etiquette tips, I guess. I, I hope, I, please, I hope today's show, I'm worried that it might be a little disjointed because, you know, I, I've just got a lot of different little points that I wanna, that I wanna mention and uh, in no particular order and so, Hopefully, hopefully today's show will not be too disjointed as we roll through these. Um, maybe a shorter show than average, but it may be a longer show. I'm not sure. I've got more notes, but I think it's kind of just point, 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 point. So we'll see. So let's start with the obvious, um, the stuff your mom taught you, the stuff your dad taught you. Saying please and thank you goes a long way. It's called courtesy. Uh, saying, you know, calling people sir and ma'am or, you know, Mr. and Mrs. or Ms., um, that is definitely something that I try to do to, to everyone. I, I just feel like that's, again, you know, the first names can be more familiar and casual. And again, you do have to use your judgment. Sometimes, sometimes I will use the first names, but I, I sort of try to err toward the side of being a little more formal and showing people a little more respect and treating people like they're a little more important. Um... Just little things like saying hello instead of hi. Hi is a little casual. Um, or I hear folks, you know, just little things like, you know, you guys. I hear, I, you know, little phrases like that that I hear that are just a, a little more casual. That At least at least you want to be aware of those um, and use those when they're appropriate and don't use them when, when they might not be as appropriate. Um, I think making eye contact is a big part of etiquette and good manners. Some folks may think that's not, but you know, I do. Again, it's that part of 
making the person that you're interacting with feel like they're important and that, and that they are deserving of your full attention. If you're off, you know, wandering around, you're not, you're not giving them their full attention. So make eye contact. In, in talking about this topic, I'm just reminded of people that I've been lucky enough to meet in my life who, who, and you don't think of them, you don't, when you meet them, you don't think, oh, this person has such good etiquette or that this person has such good manners, but you just think of them as being so nice. I mean, I'm thinking of one particular guy in particular who I would run into him and he would like take my hand in both of his hands and look me right in the eye and lean in and really just make me feel like running into me was the highlight of his entire day. And I know it wasn't, but it may, he made me feel that way. And what a good feeling and what a good way to make other people feel. So, you know, to me, when we're talking about good manners, that, that's what, it, you know, that's the payoff. That's what it's about is making other people feel good and feel comfortable. So, um, opening doors, I've already uh, alluded to that uh, above. I do try to do that for men and for women. Um, I also open car doors. And um, I heard a quote once that I didn't like um, that was, if you see a man opening a car door for a woman, you should assume that it's either a new car or it's a new woman. I, that, is, that is the antithesis of my viewpoint on the matter. I definitely try to open car doors and always have and always will. Uh, shaking hands. This is a good topic to bring up. Uh, first of all, I, I guess we were, you know, it's one of the basic things we get taught, right? Is, you know, you want to give a firm handshake. You don't want to be a, you know, halfway. You want to be firm. But you also, you know, you don't want to hurt somebody. So don't, you know, don't put the, the bear crush on them. Um, especially if it's a woman. Now, uh, now here's a, a, an area where I'm going to draw a gender uh, difference, but I, I think this one is completely appropriate, keeping in mind that what we've talked about is that we want to make people feel comfortable. So when you're meeting a man, gen, uh, and you're a man, you're generally going to offer your hand to that man uh, to shake. Do not offer your hand to a woman. Now, here's why I say this. Because... Women haven't all been brought up in a, you know, where, where that's something that you do, where you shake hands with a man or, or each other or whatever. Men are more so brought up that way, I think. Women have not been. So you don't want to make the woman feel uncomfortable by sticking your hand out and she's like taken aback and not sure what to do. Now, some women will offer their hand, and of course, if they offer their hand, you shake it. That's, you know, that's why I say I have no problem with this. It's about trying to not make the other person feel uncomfortable or make them feel like they've done something wrong. And again, if you're shaking hands with a woman, be very uh, aware of not doing the bear claw grip, especially because uh, women probably are more likely than uh, men to be wearing a ring on that finger, and you don't want to hurt them. Um, what to do with your hands? Boy, I break this rule on this podcast where I talk with my hands all the time. But, you know, and again, th these, these, are, these, these rules don't have to be rigid. It's more just to give you things to think about and be aware of. And so to think about how you, what you're doing might be coming across. So the, the rule is that at, when you're at rest or your hands are in repose, um, if you are seated, your hands would be in your lap. And if you're standing, your hands would be at your sides. So what we're talking, what, what we're getting at here is, you don't want to be the guy or gal who's always got the hands stuffed in the pockets. That that can uh, show. That can uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? That that can put a message forth that maybe you're not trying to put forth, like you're uninterested or unengaged or something like that. Same can go for crossing the arms. You don't want to have the arms crossed all the time. Uh, you know the sign the body language experts will tell you that you know you're closed off when you're when your arms are crossed So just you know just things to be aware of in, in how you are coming across to other people. That's that's part of manners is trying to Come across in a good way and make them feel comfortable um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sort of thinking here, and again, I'm, I'm trying to think if these could be grouped better, but I guess I'm just going to have to go with my notes. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention is uh, helping with coats and holding chairs. Again, this is more the 
male to the female is the way you know that I was brought up. You help a woman on with her coat, you hold a chair for her, and um, so that I mean that that's how I was brought up. Um, and, and but I'll admit this too: these these are a couple that I need to tighten my own game up a little bit. I think these are ones that I miss sometimes, and. I think these are ones that I miss sometimes. So, you know, that's the thing about a show like this. You know, maybe I'm talking to some folks that have never really gotten into etiquette and maybe don't know some of the things that you're that are that are encouraged to do. But for you know, even for me, it's it's a good refresher to remind me of the things of yeah, you know, I I probably let that one slip a little more than I should. Um, your napkin when you're eating. Uh, does not belong tucked into your collar or or anywhere else up here. Napkin belongs in your lap. And uh, if you want to, if you want to take it to the advanced class, I can't remember where I read this. And this you could say this is a silly rule, but I still do it because I read it somewhere. Is that if it's dinner, your napkin should be unfolded completely and out flat. If you're at lunch, it should be folded in half, so like a like a triangle. So I don't know. That one maybe is silly, but I but I do it. <laughs> but the napkin belongs in your lap. Um, yeah, cause see, this is what I was kind of worried about with this episode. We're jumping around a little bit, but so next I want to talk about swearing. Um, that is not so consistent with good manners and etiquette because you never know when someone is going to be offended by that. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you never to swear. I know that especially in our, today's times that would be. Uh, un, un, <laughs> unrealistic, um, you know, I swear sometimes myself, um, you know, if with people that I know very well, um, I endeavor never to swear in any sort of business setting. I think that's inappropriate. Um, you, I do not plan, you're not going to hear any F bombs on this show because I consider this to be a professional environment and I, you know, I, that's that's a decision. That's something that I don't want to be a part of this show. And again, I just try to err on the side of not swearing because I know that is the safest route, and I do not want to make others uncomfortable if I can help it. Um, here's another one of those gender role things, and this is another one. This is another one I, I wasn't really so much brought up this way, and it's something. It's one as, as an adult I've tried to adopt, and I and I maybe haven't done the best job. This is one I could still practice on, but you do not want to be the 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 the, the old gentleman's rule is that you do not remain seated when a woman is standing, and again I think this could be a good rule. That doesn't have to have to do with gender. It, you know, if, if if a man walks up to you and you're seated, I think it would be a pro probably appropriate for you to stand as well. Now, here you have to use common sense with this one too. You know, I'm not saying if you're sitting in an airport lobby and somebody walks by, you have to stand up uh, or things like that. But I I do think that's a good guideline to keep in mind. You want to be on an even footing with a person that you're interacting with. So if someone comes up to you and, and they're on their feet, you want to rise to your feet. I think I do think that's good manners. And that is something, that's one that I need to work on more myself. Um, this one is an, one of the old-fashioned man-woman rules, but I do it. I do try to walk on the street side of the sidewalk when I'm walking with a woman. It's that, you know, I feel like I'm keeping her a little bit safer. That's, you know, that's, that's me. Uh, I, and I do it, and nobody has ever told me that I shouldn't do it. So I guess I'm going to keep doing it. Um, here's an interesting one, and this is one I ran across in researching this episode, making sure that I included, you know, that I thought of all the things that I wanted to include. There were a couple things about this one that were interesting to me. And I don't think I'd thought about this one, so I was very glad that I uncovered some of these uh, tips, and I think I'm going to try these myself. These are when you're at a movie theater or a concert or anywhere where you're sitting in a row with other people, and then someone has to get up and, and get by everybody, which is, a, if there's ever a time when we need etiquette in this world, that's it, right? Because that can be uncomfortable, right? So the first tip that makes perfect sense, but I don't know that I've done this. Maybe I have. I'm not sure, but I'm going to be aware of it from now on. 
is that if you're the person who's getting up and moving down the row, you want to turn so you are facing the people in your row, not facing the front. It makes perfect sense if you think about it. Not real polite to stick your butt in everybody's face, right? So if you turn and you're facing them, I, I like that idea. And I, I think if I haven't been doing that, I'm definitely going to try doing that. The other one that, and good luck today, because I, I don't think people do this. I'm, I, maybe sometimes they do. But it's, it says if you're the person who's sitting in the row and someone's trying to get by, to stand up because that gives them more room to get by. And I guess especially if the seats retract, if you're in that type of a situation, that would definitely be the case. Otherwise, probably still would. Yeah, I know probably most people don't do that, but that's a, that's a good tip that I, that I liked and that I'm going to try to uh, implement myself, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm jumping around. I, I should have... I, I couldn't think of really categories that these tips fit in, so they jump around a little bit. I apologize. Um, it's never appropriate to get angry about bad service. That is a sure way to look like a bore. You know, if you have bad service, there are polite ways to address it, but getting mad, I mean, why, why, why? Just don't do it, just don't do it. You look like a bore. You look like somebody that I don't want to be. I mean, have you? I bet some of you have been in this situation where somebody is mad at a server or you know whoever, a service person, and you're embarrassed. For, you know, even though it's not you, you're embarrassed for them. So don't be the person that makes other people feel uncomfortable, acting that way. Um, another good manner thing you want to keep your music down if you're playing music either on a you know on your earbuds or you know even in your car it's something to be aware of. And the same with your conversations. And I know in our modern society, again, it's, you know, we're not going to eliminate having the cell phone conversations in public. Some folks would say that that's impolite in and of itself. But, you know, good luck with that. that I think that's unreasonable to tell people not to have cell phone conversations in public. But try to be considerate. Try to keep your voice down. Everybody around you does not want to hear everything that you're saying to whoever. So just be aware of that. I've I, and I've caught myself doing it too. I'm embarrassed to admit. So just so you know, I you know I make mistakes too. I've I've been on. I can think of one particular time I'm yammering on the phone and not realizing that I'm bothering people around me, and then I realize and I was like, oh god, I'm an idiot. So be aware of that. Oh, and in the movie theater, you and I I break this sometimes real quietly, but be very. You really should probably shouldn't talk at all. And if you are talking, be very 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 very, very quiet. That's rude. Don't interrupt other people when they're talking. That's bad manners. Hopefully that goes without saying. Um, <laughs> some people aren't going to like this one. Be on time. Being late is not good manners. It's not. It's not. Shows the other people that their time is not as important as your time. I uh, Before I met my darling wife, I uh, had a blind date. And this came up on the blind date where uh, she wasn't on time. And I waited, I want to say I waited 10 minutes, I think. And then I left and I went home. And then she, oh, and she didn't, and she didn't call or text me to tell me she was running late or anything like that. First date, you know, trying to make a good impression. I'm like, oh, this is a, this is a sign. So yeah, I went home. Then she uh, texted me, I think, said, where are you? I was like, well, I'm home now. It was 15, 20 minutes ago that we were supposed to meet and uh, you didn't show up. Well, she was, she was angry that I didn't wait. I wasn't angry that she wasn't on time, but I was, is insulted the right word? I mean, I felt that way. I was like, well, you know, obviously you, were, you, you didn't think it was important enough to get here on time. I felt like it was important enough that I got here on time and you didn't. So, so me and her wouldn't have gotten along if, anyway. So, <laughs> so there's that. Be on time. Don't chew with your mouth open. That I would hope would go without saying, but I'm saying it anyway. Nobody wants to see what you're chewing in your mouth. That's rude. Um, here's a good one. Here's one that I think a lot of folks struggle with. I think a lot of folks struggle with this one. What do you say when someone gives you a compliment? There is pretty much only one appropriate response when someone pays you a compliment. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
So often we don't take compliments graciously. Maybe we're embarrassed or we think that that's going to make us look egotistical or something. And, you know, so somebody says, oh, you look so nice today. And you're like, oh, no, I look awful. Well, what are you doing? They've paid you a compliment and you're like arguing with them. Take the compliment gracefully. Thank, thank them for being nice enough to pay you that nice compliment. Next one is don't gossip. And I know it can be tempting sometimes, but it's a bad idea for so many reasons. It's definitely bad manners. And the thing, and you've probably heard this, but, you know, if you're gossiping with, with if I'm gossiping with Frank about Bob, and we're no, 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 then does Frank, is, what is Frank going to think about me? Well, is Frank not going to think, well, if he's talking about Bob behind his back, then I'll bet he talks about me behind my back. So don't, don't be that person. Don't have that reputation. That's not the reputation that you want to have. Um, I mean, I, I've heard some folks that take it to, to such an extreme that they won't talk about another person at all, saying anything about them, even nice, if they're not around. Like they feel like that's rude to talk about another person in their absence. So I don't know about that. Maybe, but it'd be, it'd be better than gossiping, that's for sure. If you are invited to a uh, party at someone's house, do not show up empty-handed. You always want to bring a, a small token gift for the host or hostess. That Again, that's just a good manners thing. Cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. I would hope that would go without saying, but I'm saying it. Do that. Um, be careful about... Put, doing put downs, trying to be funny. You know what I mean? And we all do this, and I do this with my friends. I'm guilty of it. But be careful. Err on the side of caution. Sometimes, because sometimes it may feel like a, a real put down, even though you, you think you're making a joke. Just just be aware of that and be careful with those. Those can, those can be dangerous. Um, dressing appropriately is part of good manners. You want to, you know, show the importance of the situation that you're in and the, and the people that you're meeting. We talked about wardrobe on another episode, so I'm not going to talk too much more about that, but I, I do think that's a part of manners. Um, okay, here's one, and, you know, again, I'm, I may be fighting a losing battle on this one, but was I the only one that was taught that when you go inside, you take your hat off? Because I think I might be the only one that was taught that. Or maybe people don't think ball caps are hats. Now, if you, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about the wardrobe episode, so some of y'all know that I'm not a huge fan of ball caps unless you're playing baseball, which is what they're for. Um, but anyway, so but yeah, I wish I wish I would see more people taking those off when they're indoors. It just you know, to me, it's just a I don't know. I just I just wish people did. For that matter, I really wish we could bring back the whole uh, the whole tipping the hat thing, but I'm probably really dreaming there. That would be that'd be cool. Or a little bow. I love. I, can we? Can, could we get that into our culture? I, I think of that more with Asian cultures. Although I know some Americans that do it. I love the idea of giving somebody a little bow when you meet them. I mean, what a way to show respect. I, I really like that. When people have done it to me, I just I'm, I'm taken aback because I'm like, oh, you know, and then I do it back. You know, it's a great thing. I like that. Let's, I wonder if we could bring that back. So, so, what, so many of these things I'm talking about, I mean, if, if I can get the, the thought in your head to actively look for opportunities to show consideration to other people, because that's what so much of this that we're talking about really is about, is really looking for those opportunities. And being diplomatic, and what I mean, well, there's a lot of things we could talk about with that, but, you know, don't draw attention to other people's mistakes. If somebody makes a mistake or a faux pas, you know, don't draw attention to that. They're probably embarrassed enough. You know, try not to embarrass other people. You know, that's the kind of thing that good manners are really about. Don't make them feel awkward. Praise other people whenever you get an opportunity to do so. Not only is that good manners, that's just being a good person. Um, one of my favorite things to do if somebody, and you know, some folks may say this is too casual. You can feel free to comment below and tell me I'm wrong for this, but I've, I've always liked this phrase, especially in this um, type of situation. If somebody apologizes to me, you know, like somebody, you know, whatever, they feel like they've done something wrong and they're trying to show good manners by apologizing to me for something, I'm always like, no worries. 
no worries. I just like that phrase. To me, that's just the, the, the nicest way to just totally, I hope, make somebody feel like, you know, hey, no, it's okay. No worries. No worries. Um, another little thing I like to do if somebody says, excuse me or pardon me, like, you know, when we're, you know, uh, in each other's way and moving through the restaurant or something like that, and they're like, excuse me or pardon me, I always say, excuse me, pardon me. Because you're not in my way any more than I'm in your way. We're, but we're, you know, you're as important as I am. So if, if I'm in the way, I, I want to be apologizing to you. So just to wrap things up, I mean, if you don't hear anything else I say, I, th these last two tips, I think, are going to take you a long way towards having good manners and, and good etiquette. The first is if you go throughout your day trying to treat everyone you encounter as if they were an honored, special guest in your home. Even if you're not in your home when you encounter them. If you treat everyone with that level of respect and importance and care, that will go a long way. And of course, my final tip for good etiquette, for good manners, for making other people comfortable, is to smile early and often. So that's it. I hope today's episode has benefited you. Again, I apologize. I, I, it, I, I, I do feel like it jumped around a little bit, but hopefully the information was there and was good and was helpful. So please subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Please like the video if you liked it. Please dislike it if you think I jumped around too much. And tell me, you can comment in the comments and tell me what a lousy job I did. Uh, if you, sign up for our emails at abetterchallenge.com. We've got a Facebook group. We're on all the social media. Get involved. Let's get a conversation going. That's it. Thank you so much for watching the Always Better Challenge show. I'm your host, Joe Bedford. Until next time, go out there and be courteous and make it happen.